There are two types of people in this world. Some believe that certifications are great and others believe that certifications are worthless. So should a company hire a candidate with certification or without certification? Well, there's no simple answer to it. So if you measure certificate versus skill, obviously skills should be prioritized more than certifications. But if you do have skills and hands-on experience, and if you decide to do a relevant certification, then that adds a cherry on top in your resume. They kind of put a stamp on your resume from an external third-party company like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, for example, if you choose to do cloud-based certifications. And it has more uh, credibility than like doing some other types of certifications from Udemy or whatnot. Now I talked about this point in one of my earlier videos where I talked about all different types of certifications possible and which one should you aim for but this video is different. In this video I'm going to talk about GCP machine learning engineer certification. This is a certification that I recently did and I told you guys about it in my last video and the reason I'm not in the office yet is because I had a professional machine learning engineer exam of GCP and uh, I received an enormous response to make a video on this so that they can decide if they want to aim for this certification and if they want to go for it how should they prepare for it so here we are if you don't know me i'm josh and i'm an ai engineer at google and in this video we're not only going to talk about how to prepare for machine learning engineer certification but we'll start all the way from is this certification even worth it second what different like things you will learn as a part of this certification course and lastly how to clear this exam like what resources to refer to what kind of mock tests to give before you sit in the actual exam but before we jump into that do not forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel that helps us out a lot after you have done that let's get started See, I have given multiple certifications. I have given three AWS certifications, one Snowflake certification and two GCP certifications. But this one, PMLE, which is like Professional Machine Learning Engineer, was by far the toughest certification exam that I've had. But who is this for? Well, this is for ML engineers or aspiring ML engineers who want to learn everything about ML, starting with how to develop a machine learning model, how to productionize it, how to operationalize it in a long term. It starts with at a very fundamental level. So it talks about like precision and recall definition and then it goes all the way to neural network architectures and then transformer architectures and whatnot. So if you're a data scientist or ML engineer or even a developer with passion for machine learning or AI, this certification is your golden ticket. It shows developers how you can pick real world problems and solve them using machine learning. But one thing that I would like to highlight is this certification is not for complete beginners on gcp so for example if you have had no hands-on experience on gcp at all then i don't recommend directly going and you know booking this exam and going for this certification in that case what you can do is just get a free tier gcp account you'll also get around 300 credits or so 300 dollars worth of credits when you create it so you can use that for like your POC purposes and you can probably create a project on GCP. I'm going to link some interesting projects in the description below. So pick one of those and then you'll have good idea about what GCP is, how things work in it. If you already have hands-on experience on GCP or if you have done any previous GCP certification then you don't need to do all that. You can directly jump right into this exam. Now that we have covered who is this certification for, let's talk about what different topics are covered. So for this, let's look at the official certification guide and the thing about this guide is it doesn't only have different topics but it also has the breakdown of percentage of different topics that would appear in the actual exam uh, this is the high level summary and then you can see the section one is architecting low code ml solutions so this section is all about using bigquery machine learning or auto ml so it's like auto ml is a product where you can do drag and drop and develop machine learning models bigquery ml is you can develop machine learning models using sql so this is like low code or no code machine learning solutions so this this part talks about that uh, it also talks about apis like in which you don't have to develop any other models you can directly use pre-built google apis for your applications then the next section is collaborating within and across teams to manage 
data and data models so it's about how to organize different types of data how to manage data set how to do pre-processing which is pretty much the job of data engineers creating and consolidating features right it also talks about how to do model prototyping uh, in notebooks and then finally tracking and running machine learning experiments the section three is scaling prototypes into machine learning models as you can see it's like building models training models and then choosing appropriate hardware for training it also talks about how to use distributed hardware or distributed compute when you are training your machine learning models section four talks about serving and scaling models batch or online or more like real-time inference it also talks about a b testing versions scaling online model serving so once you have like let's say served your machine learning models what different products like feature store that you can use and then the next question is automating on orchestrating ml pipelines now obviously you you have done all the work manually first but in the in in going forward when you want to uh, deploy a new version of the model you don't want the pipeline to be manual for the first time it's okay so this section talks about how to automate and orchestrate machine learning pipelines it talks about important libraries like mlflow uh, cloud composer kubeflow vertex ai pipelines which can be used to orchestrate the machine learning workflow uh, it also talks about how to track and audit metadata throughout the pipeline and then section six is about monitoring machine learning solutions now that you have done everything you have automated it right but over over time in the production you have to monitor your machine learning solutions because if your model gives like 90% accuracy now it's definitely going to deteriorate over time because the data that it's going to see after five years will be very different compared to when it was trained on so maybe the accuracy drop to let's say 80 or 85 percent you need to continuously monitor the data shift or data skew over time and you have to retrain the model when required so this section talks about that i would just like to highlight that the exam overall uh, has about 50 questions and it lasts about two hours so you have approximately two minutes per question so you have to be really mindful of the time limit so if you are taking more than like one or 1.5 minutes in a question you should like train your brain to think about like let's flag this question and move on to the next one and about the passing percentage so there's no specific published passing percentage but uh, it is believed to be around 70% for this exam, which is a little lower compared to other GCP professional exams like data engineer exams, which is 80%. But that is because this machine learning exam is uh, significantly more difficult or challenging compared to data engineering exam. So even like GCP knows that and that's why they have reduced the passing threshold a little. So now that we know about the exam and we also know about the topics that we will learn throughout the certification, let's go to the most important part of this video, which is the preparation strategy. So number one is book your certification in advance. So you want to book your certification one to two months in advance, depending on how confident are you and then start preparing. What it will do is it will create a pressure for you so that you'll have to learn almost every day uh, because you know that your exam is coming up and it will also like keep you motivated. Now, second point is divide your time into three sections. So number one, first phase should be course completion. I, I took this course for my machine learning preparation and I recommend all of you guys to take the same. And the course name itself is preparing for Google Cloud Certification Machine Learning Engineer Professional Certificate. So this is not a single course, but it's like an umbrella of eight different courses. So it will take a lot of your time. So let's look at what different courses are covered. So it's like introduction to AI and machine learning on Google Cloud, uh, launching into machine learning, which double clicks on different ML concepts and products. TensorFlow on Google Cloud. So as we know, TensorFlow and Keras are most popular libraries in machine learning even to this day. So this uh, course talks about that. And then feature engineering. This section you'll find very similar to like data engineering things if you have experience with that. Next is machine learning in enterprise. So which talks about uh, data management governance. It also talks about hyperparameter tuning and how to create batch and online predictions. And then production machine learning system. So it's about how to scale your models into production. And then finally, MLOps. As I said, over time, you need to operationalize the pipeline. You need to automate things and you also need to monitor it. 
so this one talks about all that and then ML pipelines on Google Cloud. So how you can orchestrate your uh, workflow using different products like Cloud Composer or Dataflow or Vertex AI pipelines on Google Cloud. So that's the first phase. It can last anywhere between 20 to 40 days depending on like the skill set of a person and also depending on how much hands on they are following. Next is going through documentation. So going through documentation is absolutely key for these kind of certification exams because the course will teach you about the products it will teach you about the fundamentals and everything but it will not teach you about all the limitations or all the best practices of a given product so for example vertex ai is very widely used product in all the ml or ai things that you do on google cloud so this entire documentation of vertex ai is super useful and it has so many beginners guide as well and it has different tutorials that you can follow through as well start with this get started section and then go through this entire documentation it talks about how to use machine learning models for image for tabular data for text data and it also has different kind of labs within that if you want to follow that with like hands-on but if you have done hands-on in the course itself you don't need to do that in the documentation this phase might take about 7 to 15 days depending on your speed and then last phase of any certification exam probably the most important phase is going through the mock test you should spend about a week to 10 days in giving different mock test exams I can give you a very good website to start with. You can go to exam topics. So as you can see, there are 285 questions here. You can just click on that. These questions, a lot of them are from uh, previous exams that have been actually asked in the certification exam before. You can see that the right solution here is C, but the A solution is most vo voted. So this is a very common problem with exam topics or even any other such websites is that they get answers often wrong but good thing about exam topics is it lets people vote on the right solution and then people discuss it in the discussion section so if i click on discussion you will be able to see that how many people voted for a and then what was their reasoning behind that i would say that most of the time most voted solution is the right one but one thing that you'll run into is that it will only give you about 20 or so pages uh, and then it will ask you for a paid subscription i don't feel that the paid subscription of exam topics is worth doing so what i did instead is there is a good udemy course that has about 350 or so exam questions and it also has proper organized exams so there are like five, six different exams and each exam has 50 different questions. They are time bounded just like the real exam. So if you start that, you will get the real exam feeling. And it also has in the end, you can see the actual solution. The author has described the right answers. But the thing is, even this, like 90% of the questions are right, but not all of them. But the good thing is a lot of people have commented on it and then the author has responded that yes, your reasoning is correct and then he has gone back and changed the right answer in his mock tests. I also did a couple of comments in some of the questions and he agreed to my point of view and changed the answers. A lot of people like me have already done that exercise of providing feedback and giving the actual right answer. So if you take this course, there is a very good amount of chance that most of the answers that you will find is the correct one. If you cover about 300 to 350 questions before the exam, chances are 60 to 70% of the questions will be very similar to those questions. Throughout all of these three different phases, the important thing is to make notes, either make handwritten notes or maybe create a document in your laptop that you can follow through. So for example, these are my notes. So I created different sections for course, one for exam, one for documents, and then one for extras. So every weekend I used to go through these notes and it would obviously incrementally, it would take more amount of time for you to go through your notes because they get bigger. This is very useful that you do revision in exams. So for example, this is the question that I had problem with when I was solving the mock test. And then this is the answer and this is the reasoning behind that. And then some additional documentation. And then again, next question that I faced difficulty with its answer and then its justification so doing this will help you a lot it will make sure that your concepts are crystal clear and that's really important yes that's it uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have any questions any suggestions comments thoughts let's talk about it in the comment section below and as i said do not forget to leave the like and subscribe to the channel uh, that's it from my side see you next time